Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our live Dhamma broadcast and our nightly Dhamma for those of you here in Hamilton. Tonight I thought to talk about fear. Baya, Baya in Pali means fear or danger or fearsomeness, terror. Those of you who still dare to turn on the news, I'm sure are inundated by fear mongering. We call it terrorism. The intentional cultivation of fear in others. Sometimes there are other reasons for or other goals, but quite often well, it's quite common now to see this seeming single-minded purpose of uh, psychological warfare or, or terrorism. Uh, the, f the first thing for us to understand about about terror and terrorism is that being psychological warfare, of course, it it relies upon the the victim. It relies upon the vulnerability of the victim and the sensitivity of the victim it doesn't work against people who are not afraid and you know, obviously it seems somewhat trite or, or uh, simplistic to suggest that Part of the solution is to not be afraid, but it's important to understand, it's really important to understand as a Buddhist the mechanics of, of suffering, the mechanics of conflict. As we know, if you go deeply into the meditation practice, even physical pain is is only true suffering when you let it upset you. Even physical pain, even true uh, direct physical violence is only truly uh, is only truly successful when the victim is psychologically vulnerable. But terrorism, terrorism which seems to usually involve a lot of physical violence, it's conducted in such a way as to have uh, overwhelming collateral damage psychologically. So of course not to minimalize the terrible tragedy of, of death physical pain that comes from these acts of terror. But 
but to remark upon what makes them so effective. That's how it scares people. And of course, it's, I, I, I don't think it's the solution. It's not the entire solution for us to stop being afraid of such things. But it is worth remarking that between being afraid of them and being not afraid of them, not being afraid of or, or frightened by acts of of gross and, and horrific violence is far, for, far preferable to be unshaken, to be impervious. It's far, more, far preferable, not just for one's own self, but for one's ability to react properly and to consider the situation wisely. In the Buddhist time, I mean, I, I can't think of any, obviously there were no suicide bombers in the, in the Buddhist time, there were no violent shootings, of, you know, I, I can't think of any violent killings of innocent individuals simply for the purpose of cultivating terror or targeting a specific group. Imagine if I thought, if I thought for a while I could come up with some. But uh, there are specific acts of terrorism mild acts, but give you the general, um, I still give the general idea of responses and, and means of, of coping with or dealing with, with fear. First of all, about fear in general, we have the Dajjika Sutta, which is a very important sutta, really. Not in terms of having any core value for leading one to enlightenment, but it's very important in in creating Buddhist culture and creating a a Buddhist outlook on life, because it deals directly with fear. And 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 uh, deals directly with the triple gem, this these three powerful objects of reflection: the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. So the Buddha said. He talked about this war, and he, and he was telling a story about Indra. How Indra said, well, if you're afraid in battle, all the angels fighting against the, whatever the other guys were, the non-angels, asuras, they called them, fighting against them. He said, if you're afraid, look at my banner. Look at the dajjaka, the top of my banner, you'll see the flag. And when you see my standard there, and you know that I haven't fallen, it will give you courage and your fear will disappear. And he said, and if you don't look at mine, we'll look at this this general and, and that general and these gods. Look at their banners. And the Buddha said, you know, he, he can say this all he wants, but the truth is, if they look at his banner, maybe, maybe the fear will disappear and maybe it won't. Because Indra's not a very good role model. He's, he's not himself free from fear. He's not someone that when you think of him, your mind is calm and you have a good example and a reminder of right and wrong and an uh, example of a pure and unshaken individual who's not afraid of anything. To remind you that this is the best way. And he said, but if you, it, I say to you monks, if you ever are off in the forest and you get afraid, or let's say those of us who are living in society and we're afraid. He said, think of the Buddha. And this is where we actually get these main chants. He said, think of all the qualities of the Buddha. And so if you ever hear Buddhist chanting in the Theravada tradition in any country, they all recite these. Siti Piso, Bhagava, Rahang Sama, Sambuddho, and so on. He said, or if you don't think about me, think about the Dhamma. If you don't think about the Dhamma, think about the Sangha. So, I mean, not to suggest that that's a solution to terrorism or it's a way for 
us to be free from fear of, of gross physical violence. But uh, on the other hand, as Buddhists and as Buddhist meditators, and even as people who are not Buddhists but just as meditators, you know, the idea of remembering, the idea of, of recollecting yourself and remembering the the path that we're on, remembering those who have trod the path, remembering the ones who have taught the path, remembering their greatness, their nobility, their freedom from fear gives us a good grounding and reminds us that fear is not useful, doesn't help us, it makes us a victim. And if we can free ourselves from our reactions, then really terrorism loses a lot of its strength, a lot of its power. So certainly it is part of the solution, I think. But this concept, I mean, this is a key concept in Buddhism, the idea that reactions are the problem. It also applies to terrorists, those who create terror. We create terror because we have goals, we have ambitions, evil goals, evil ambitions, or else evil means, um, evil intentions, evil minds, evil mind states. We have these inside. You know, when a bully picks on someone weaker than them, when older siblings frighten their younger siblings, when parents scare their children, yell at them, shout at them, raise their fists or even hit them. All of this is terrorism. I mean, part of it is terrorism. Sometimes it's just the desire to inflict pain. Sometimes it's the desire to, to frighten. All of this is, is, is reaction as well. It's based on reaction based on an inability to be at peace. So, I mean, really the solution, if, it, if one can call it that, because there's no question that it's, it's, it's not likely to be, a, be successful, not anytime soon. But the work that we do to fix and to solve these problems is to do to teach. You know, I mean, a lot of terrorism is based on, on um, antagonism, right? enmity towards be between groups. Religious groups is what we're seeing now. We see Islam. Islam is, is uh, not Islam, but people, Muslims are uh, very angry and not just Muslims, some people from these countries, Muslim countries in general. are very angry, angry at Christians, angry at Americans. There have been religious wars going back centuries, millennia maybe, uh, angry against Jews. And then you have the other way, you know, the Americans are and, and many Europeans, Canadians, have anger and antagonism towards Muslims, towards people who come from Muslim countries, regardless of whether they're Muslim or not. So we have racism, we have whatever it is to be prejudiced against another person's religion. This is all reactions, right? We have going back generations, this bad blood where we can't stop this cycle. People from these with these religious or cultural or ethnic backgrounds are fighting with each other, white against black, against brown, against red, yellow, <laughs> Muslim against Christian, against Jew, Buddhist against Hindu. The 
we haven't learned to just be we haven't learned objectivity we haven't learned to experience life without reacting without judging without building up these prejudices and these cruel intentions so the real solution I mean, it um, it bears bears repeating that suffering comes from our reactions not from our experiences if we could learn to just experience things as they are we'd let go of them we wouldn't cling we'd fly away leave all of our suffering behind and then whatever happened in we have, I have two other stories um, the uh, The first one is in is about these uh, monks who went off into the forest to practice meditation, and uh, the angels up in the trees had to come down. They were they were Buddhist, I guess, or they were uh, not, probably not Buddhist, but they would have been respectful towards recluses. And when the monks went into the forest, the angels. Uh, Oh, we have to come down from the trees. So they were tree angels or sprites or whatever. And they had to leave their homes up in the trees because out of respect for the monks, out of respect for these recluses, I guess. It's a, some sort of, you know, maybe it was because Indra had instituted from the high heavens because he was Buddhist. Uh, maybe he had said, well, you have to, if the monks go into the forest, it's a law in the angel world, maybe, I don't know. But they came down and uh, it kind of irked them and they weren't really happy about it. So they thought, well, what can we do to get these monks to leave our, 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 our area? And so all day and night they cultivated fear. They gave, they sent these visions to the monks of headless bodies and bodiless heads and uh, gruesome ghosts and, and apparitions of all sorts and sounds and so on. And the monks were unable to be, unable to focus, they were totally out of their minds, freaking out, and they said, we can't stay here. And so they went back to the Buddha, and the Buddha said to them, oh, well, the first time you went to the forest you didn't have a, a weapon, a weapon to fight this terror, this terrorism. This is one, a good example of Buddhist terrorism. Smile, I know there was no. Oh, there was some sort of significant. You know, can you imagine one of those being in a, tor in a horror film? That this, these terrible visions, they didn't know what was going on. They thought these were actually demons, maybe out to get them. And the Buddha said, Well, you need a weapon to fight this. And he taught them what we, we call the Karaniya Mittasit. I said, go back and as you walk into the forest, chant this. And so they chanted the loving kindness, the sutta on loving kindness. Karaniyam atakusalena yattang yantang santang patang abhisamecha sako juja su juja suva juja san su juja suva juja Suvachoja. I have to chant it. And on and on. May all beings be happy in their minds. Which, um, which speaks of one sort of conventional way of dealing with with antagonism, dealing with uh, enmity. A good way to change reactions is to apply the opposite. When confronted by hate, reply with love. It's conventional, it's not a deep Buddhist teaching, but it is a Buddhist teaching that when you supplant something with its opposite, 
you are able to change the course of events. It takes work, it takes effort, it's not something that's sustainable over the long term. You know, it takes effort to constantly have a loving attitude when, everyone, when people are throwing hate at you. But it worked. These, these monks, you know, they, what they did is they taught. It was a teaching. It wasn't just sending love to these angels. They were chanting it, and it was a reminder. A reminder of the suffering that comes from these bad intentions. The intent to cause fear. Really, the best way we can... The best way we can help, we can... Uh, defeat our enemies is to give them what is most precious if you give them knowledge and wisdom give them truth the other the other the other example it's a very small sort of insignificant example but it speaks um, to the larger picture of of the context of these these acts it's, um, I think there's more than one actually, there's, there's examples of Mara. So the monks would be sitting in meditation and suddenly an ox would come along and um, uh, walk up near where the bowls, their ceramic bowls were stacked. And the monks would freak out, try to, oh we have to get up, there's this big ox coming, it's going to break all our bowls. So they all got agitated and the Buddha said to them, that's not an ox, that's Mara. And apparently this happened several times in different ways. Mara would do anything he could to cause fear. And I only bring that you know, insignificant example up and, you know, who knows, it seems kind of a strange thing to happen, but to sort of um, think about what aspect of samsara we're talking about here. You know, fear is, is Mara's domain. Fear is part of this, part of samsara, of those who delight in, in, in chaos, those who delight in suffering. There are angels, human beings, who are bent on this. And uh, Now just to be clear that we don't want to be one of those people. We don't want to be involved with that part of samsara. It's a part of samsara that will probably always be around. Probably not something that's ever going to disappear completely. It might ebb and, ebb and swell. But the universe is a big place. And so really our goal is to, well, the Buddha said, you know, keep your minds calm, keep your minds set, keep your minds objective. So I bring it up as well because it, it's really the, an instruction to meditate, a reminder to us that many things will come to disturb our state of mind, both in meditation and out. And they're the problem. It's Mara. I think it's Mara. It's Satan. It's that part of samsara that wants to pull us back in, that doesn't want to see us free, doesn't want to see us happy, doesn't want to bring it to f allow us peace. So our practice is to free ourselves from the hooks, from the grasp, free ourselves from the vulnerability to these forces, forces of Mara, and to help others. I mean, the best way we can help, we can overcome terrorists is by freeing them from the need, helping them be free from this need to torture others and thereby harm themselves, and corrupt their own mind, sentence themselves to great suffering. There you go. Just some thoughts on fear, terror, terrorism. I think are somewhat apropos.
There's the demo for tonight. Thank you all for tuning in.